Okay, here is the Elmo FP-C dual projector. It's actually FP-C zoom. Um, there's a manual for it, the original manual. Uh, I'm not sure the year, I want to say this is late 60s, early 70s. So I'm going to take the lid off, show you, the, this button presses down, comes off. Inside, you get storage for your project, your uh, tech up reel. Okay, tech up reel. Well, I'll we'll just put that on right now, it goes here. And this is the plug that goes here. Okay, it stores right up in here. So it's nifty, everything stays together. Okay, so we're going to put this to the side. Take up reel goes on, snaps like that, and then you got, if you, you know, snaps closed like that, and then when that's flat across, you know the take up reel is all the way on. You can see it's a unique take up reel. It's got these little fingers that come out. It's an auto, it's one of the first auto, well, Bell and Howell had auto loads for years, uh, but it's almost attempted auto load. It works pretty good. I don't think there's ever been a problem with this one. Um, you can tell it's very clean. It's a very nice unit. Um, some of the ones I see on eBay are pretty nasty. They're, you know, they, they, they need refurbished. There are some marks here and there, some paint wear and things like that. But overall, I mean, this unit is actually very clean. Um, and it is an Elmo. I can tell you Elmo projectors are pretty much the Cadillac um, or, you know, Mercedes, whatever you want to call it, uh, whatever your favorite car is, of um, the projectors, projectors that were ever made for both um, 16 and 8. Um, and this is no exception. This is a very nice unit. Um, open the door, the bulbs in here. Um, it's very easy to get at everything. You have your sprockets here. And what's neat about this, while I have this open, I'll show you. Um, it is dual, like I said. You don't need two things that are cool about this. One is you don't need a um, an adapter because this little mechanism here allows you to get that's regular eight and this stays out for super eight so it's a unique design for elmo the other thing is when you switch um switch from from eight to super eight and so forth uh, make sure these are open first of all you don't want these against the, the hub those are open just like it says here how to do um the upper but the red is for super and the lower is for eight so to, to go to Super 8, you just press this and see how it's switched. Now this is jetting out, this one's in. And to switch back, you just press on the bottom one, it switches you back. Um, we're going to start with, with regular 8, so I'm going to leave that in. And we close our, our little um, sprocket release guides here. They're actually guides for the film. Um, here's your focus, um, here's your loop restore, and here's your frame uh, adjustment. Okay, and this this projector is uh, 110. It's also 220 uh, for European voltages. Um, so really, all the way anywhere in the world um, uh, that you want to use this, you can. There is a way to switch it. If you take this other cover off back here, okay, and even has a guide here for. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Without messing everything up here, there's a there's a guide here. There's a needle that shows you it's at 115 right now, but it does. Everything from 100 to 220, it looks like 240 actually it'll do. So um, it will, if you take this off, it'll show you how to switch it. Um, and I think it's either jumpers or I'm not sure. Yeah, actually I think they're jumpers that you set inside and it'll uh, um, use that part of the transformer to give you whatever voltage you need. I'm not going to mess with taking this back cover off right now because it's just the inner workings of the projector. The nice thing about this one too, you got separate lamp on and off. Um, so you can run everything independently. It does it does do forward and rear projection. Um, the cool thing about that, it's all in the switch. This button here, um, when you run it, um, well, we have to plug it in, but it's, when you put it on run, this is still, it'll go forward. If you push the button down and turn it, it will go into reverse projection, okay? Um, here's your speed control here. Um, so that gives you a nice, it's a perfect, um, you know, for doing transfers because it gives you a nice um, variety of uh, of, uh, of speed control for projection um, and for projection rate, I should say the frame rate, uh, sorry, and the lamp on and off, um, which is nice when you shut it off and you're not using it. Um, so anyway, okay, so run forward 
that's spinning. This stays. Okay. Now if you want rear projection, this spins and this stays, so it's gonna run this way through the machine. Okay. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna thread a film. Okay, we're gonna thread the thread a regular eight film to <coughs> start with. There's also this is a film splicer which is not which is very nice. Um, it just it's nice because it cleans up. If you have a like a leader that's bent or something, you, clean, you can clean up the edge of your leader so that it threads nicely. Um, that's a nice little feature. I'm gonna put this on here and turn it so it just pops right on, and then that locks. That's how you know you got it nice and square with the other, so you're straight across. I'm gonna show this so you can see it. This knob here allows you to. There's a um, foot that pops out. Okay, I don't know if you can see. See, it pops all the way down, and you can also adjust it wherever you want in between. See, so you can go like that's flat, up a little bit up, or all the way up, or whatever. We're going to leave it about there for right now until we see where we have to be for projection. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to show you how it threads here. Okay, so first thing is push the, this green down. Okay, we open this up to just make sure that these are down. Because you don't want to have these up like that when you're when you're trying to thread. You want these down, which they are. Um, they always are down. It's a precautionary thing. All right. So you turn the lamp off. You leave it off um, until we th until we successfully thread. And the thread is right here. The nice thing is too. There's a light here. You can't really see. It's got the the R, um, which also uh, reinforces that it's regular eight. If that said us, you wouldn't want to do that with, with regular film. So I put it in here. And there she goes. It should, and it'll come up here automatically. There it comes. Oh, ooh. It's, there it is. Okay. So I grabbed it. Okay, so now we're going to leave it running. All right, so that's <clears throat> pretty awesome right there. Um, shows it working nice. Here's a speed control, down to nothing. I mean, that's hardly anything. All right. Now I wanted to show, I'll also show rear projection. Um, it's also very nice to show that, so I will. Um, anyway. It shows you the clarity. Looper store is here. We don't need that. Right now, the frame it looks perfect. So, yep. Perfect. The frame's perfectly set up. And that's rear projection. And now we're going backwards. And slow it down a little. Yeah. The rear on this one seems to be <clears throat> a touch faster than forward, but not a huge deal because at full speed forward you don't get any artifacts, which is nice, so that's what you want. But this is rear projection. You can see it's rock solid. You know, the, there's no weird, nothing's jumping around, it's not, it's just a smooth, smooth and reverse it is as it is forward. Uh, so it's really a solid unit. And as I say, it's clean. Um, it's just really in good shape. And you can see the inner workings of film, all the different you know, film paths. It's in reverse now because it's closer to the, um, the beginning. I didn't want to run the whole film. It's, I didn't want to waste another 15 minutes running it. Um, But generally, you're going to run the film from beginning to end if you're doing transfers or if you're reviewing it, whatever the case may be. Uh, this is a good projector for any of that kind of jazz. So it's at the end now. You'll see it go through its There's the end. See where it goes. Okay, so. Okay, so now we're we're done. And if you just pretend like we just watched the whole movie, which more or less did. Okay, so I'm ready to go. You push the button down, 
for rewind. And you get those other white grabs, so you just do that. There you go. Rewind time's pretty quick. Probably be, I think a seven takes like two minutes, so a five probably took a minute. I haven't timed it, but I mean, if you counted here, I would say it's even less than a minute, probably for a full five, but it might be a whole minute. Um, threes are, you know, 30 seconds. Three inch, the little three inch reels, 30 seconds. As I say, it is a nice projector. The, the variable speed makes all the difference um, in your transfers, especially if you're going to do film transfers where you view what you want and then the one, you know, on this thing and then um, the ones you're going to transfer, you use this transfer so you can also view and then decide. Um, most people transfer everything they have and then in the computer they edit and decide what they want to keep and what they don't want to keep because depending on how much film, of course, you have, you may have a whole reel you don't want, so I guess that's the case where you wouldn't want to do that, so. So towards the end, it's, it gets slower because it's being gentle, it doesn't want to fly off. Um, I guess it's not, it doesn't uh, want to rewind all the way as fast as, as it has. But, you know. So it's not a super issue, but it's uh, the clutch is probably just it's probably a loose belt is what it is. See, it's you not know, fast. But towards the end, like that, you may have to help it. So that's just a small issue. Um, but like I say, it's not enough to even be concerned about. It's better to do that than have it fly off to go too fast and totally fly off the end. So it's a good thing to leave there. So that's the lens. You can see the what it is okay it does have a little bit of it's a little bit of some spots inside there but it's nothing that I don't think that would cause an issue with this so um, it should be fine I mean it's it's one of those things that if you don't if you never looked at it you'd never know but I'm picky so I like to document every single thing that I saw but we're gonna do we're gonna I'm gonna demo and show you how to set it up for super 8 it's very simple First of all, the hub, this supply hub, um, doesn't need an adapter. It does both, like I think I mentioned before. Um, <clears throat> and all you do basically is you, you lock these out and you push this red button here, which is the red reel and the clear, the regular silver reel. Red reel is for Super 8. Close these back down and now we're ready to go. And so now you see this change to an S there. I don't know if that shows. But it's in the video, uh, or you know, in, on the projector itself for the videos, it says S there. That's, that indicates Super 8. Okay, so I won't, I'm not even going to project this. I just wanted to show you how this worked. Okay, so um, as you can see, the hub, see, it, it fills that gap um, and it stays. But I'll just show you how this works. Again, you push down your, your green. Sometimes you need to do it twice. Threading is right here. Okay. Takes that in. And thread's pretty good. And locks in. And it locks that out, which is nice. You see that's nice and quiet. Okay. So that's your Super 8. 